Oh, Sanjeev is here. Sanjeev is here. I was trying to call you. <laughs> Didi is here already. I, I, I do namaste to my ji. Sanjeev ji, namaskar. Namaste. We see some of our uh, familiar faces here. Dr. Injin is here. Saiti Academy. And Namaste. Uh, 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 good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hearty welcome to uh, to the ninth session of uh, uh, South Asian Online Literary Conference, being conducted by Sahitya Academy in collaboration with the uh, uh, Foundation of Sark uh, Writers and uh, Literature, FOSPOL. And uh, uh, it's my great honor and privilege to welcome uh, Dr. Ajit Kaurchi, the president of uh, FOSWAL. Ma'am, hearty welcome to you, to this session. And in this session, uh, we are going to hear uh, two conversations uh, uh, by Professor Abhishubhediji in conversation with uh, Dr. Sanjeev Utpreti uh, from Nepal. And the second one, uh, Ms. Uh, Namgai Peldon uh, is uh, in conversation with uh, Dr. Rinjin Rinjin from Bhutan. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. may I request uh, uh, Professor uh, Abhishubhediji uh, to start the proceedings. Uh, so, since the time is very short, we have given. Yeah. The time space is very limited. Sorry, did you, what? Ma'am, ma'am, kindly. He should give his introduction first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be, he'll be giving the introduction. So as he is he's going to introduce the the uh, professor uh, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Prethiji also. I, I'll be, yeah, I'll please. try to use the maximum time for the writer to speak. Yes, yes. Um, there's a very limited time. I just want to very briefly introduce you Professor can, Sanjeev Prethiji. Sanjeev Prethiji is a. Um, um, he is, I have, I have written this article published and sent to Didi also. I have written very interesting about this very novel in the Kathmandu Post. Very quickly, Dr. Sanjeev Upreti is a PhD from Brown University in America. He used to be my student also when, when I was a little older. Than now. Sorry about the slip of the tongue. Um, and he is a, a very eminent, I just want to read from my article which I have written about him. Sanjeev is an, is an academic, a well-known scholar and civil rights activist. He is still moving with the group, group and he is still leading the demonstrations. Activist who has deeply involved himself in the campaigns to save nature, animals, flora and fauna and the heritage sites. And so there is one introduction. The other one introduction is that um, this novel which is um, published by Book Hill, uh, Nepal, a very famous publisher, is, is second Sanjeev Upreti's second novel. It's a very, very well-known novel, and so many academics and people are discussing about this novel. And it has been, many people have been writing about this novel, and it has created quite a stir in Nepali, uh, even the reading public. And um, this is written by a scholar, but he doesn't show a scholarship. That is the power of this novel. He's, he becomes the character. He is kind of very unobtrusive style of writing. Um, and this is the story about a, um, Hamsa, Hamsa. Hamsa is the swan. Um, Hamsa, the main character here, some characters here, but this story, this novel has a parallel story, human story, as well as the story of the birds and animals. And there is a beautiful lake on the outskirt of Kathmandu called Taudaha, a very famous mythologically famous uh, lake. And incidentally, that is the fav very favorite place of uh, Dr. Sanjeev Bhupreti. He spends a lot of time around that lake and so on. And then he has created this story out of uh, observing the, uh, the, the swans and animals in that one. The most important part of this novel, very quickly, uh, before asking him the question to start the conversation, is that he has created two sets of characters, the birds and animals, one set. The other set is the human characters and the narrator. narrators are human naturally. And most of these stories are recalled, come 
through the memories and the narrated by the human characters so it is about um, but it's not only about the birds and animals it is also about the human relationship people who fail in their relationship travel abroad go to america return here so some people have written uh, about this recently one uh, uh, academic and student um, uh, has written um, a paper very um, excellent paper uh, misra she has written a paper in which she has discussed about the human relationship in this novel so indira misra has um, indira misra has written this uh, paper recently so different aspects of this novel are being very strongly discussed so i also joined the bandwagon and wrote this story uh, and i wrote this uh, this article in english for two reasons the first and important reason was to send it to didi so that she could be able to uh, see what we are talking about um, the second reason is that since everybody is writing why shouldn't i join the bandwagon so i joined the bandwagon to be one of the writers about this very famous novel so i want to start this conversation by asking um, uh dr sanjeev upreti uh, but with a very very simple general question since as i said th this novel is written about birds and human beings how do you perceive this relationship why are these two sets of characters created in this novel is there is some problem with the sound oh uh parthana sasla ko the bolo the sound hai nahi aata What is the? I I can hear, sir. No problem, sir. You go on speak. We can hear. We can hear. Sanjeev, what is the problem? Mute. Okay. Doctor Sanjeev Utpreti. Yeah, I was not able to follow. Yes. You can hear. Now I can. I am hearing now. Yeah, yeah. Can you please sir, repeat the question, sir? Professor um, Arish Shubedi ji, can you repeat the question? So this novel has two sets of characters: mm. human and animals. Let's say birds, swans. the dark some people say dark uh, why are these two sets of characters created in this novel what is the exigency what is the strategy i thought yes. one of the aims for me while writing this novel was to like challenge and decentered human centered perspective i think our entire world view is extremely human centered what at one you know at a certain level it's natural because we are all human beings Hmm. But we should realize that there are innumerable other creatures, birds, you know, like other kinds of animals, insects, everything. The human human race is only one species among these innumerable species, and we tend to act as if you know, like we own the world and we are at the center of it. So I wanted to challenge that that concept, and one way was to like question certain beliefs that we feel we humans we feel that that are innate, like national borders. but birds do not have any national borders they can fly anywhere they do not need any passports neither do they have land ownership papers mm. I mean, these are human creations birds don't have beauty contests i mean there are a lot of things that we human beings have created so my aim was to decenter that human be human centered perspective for that you know i saw i saw you, you also said i created two different interconnected worlds one is the that of swans you know that that can fly and some of the swans can fly and some of them cannot fly the hero of that swan part of my story is a yes. uh, you know like is a local swan of tauda that local yes. pond in the outskirts of kathmandu who cannot really fly but the heroine she she, she, she comes she, she is, uh, belongs to this migratory uh, a group of swans who, who that fly over the himalayas come all the way from tibet or manchuria siberia and other places so so one set of swans can fly and another cannot fly and the parallel to that is the story of these uh, like couples who are caught up in this you know this system of globalization in certain way and tied to that is the question of national borders and passports and all that so that creates tragedy in the lives of people husband can fly she she go he gets lottery visa the wife cannot get drive get visa she cannot fly so the novel is also about from my perspective what i was trying to do was to look at who can fly and who cannot fly you know uh -huh. both in the swan worlds and the human worlds and through that also and that was one thing but the, also the question of you know like other kinds of what do like the question about sexuality for example or 
question about like marriage and relationships. Mm-hmm. How would it be if we look at those things from the perspective of swans or birds rather than just human beings? So that was uh, that was one of the, my way, my strategies yeah. maybe. Yeah, that's a, um, there's one other uh, thing uh, in this one. In this novel, there is uh, uh, towards the end of the novel, both humans and birds, they had moved towards a certain um, uh, situation, a kind of condition in which uh, um, they, they realize that uh, the life is futile. They cannot fly. For example, Lahadi has the main has whom I, I call a flanner has, and there is an uncle Kaka has who oh, yeah, lost your- on, only deep, deep, deep into the into the lake, and you have you have created these two sets of swan, and there is another this beautiful swan, who he falls in love with, this swan who doesn't fly, but everybody's everybody moved towards a certain the finale, the, the the end of the the story of the life of all these characters, including human character, is towards a kind of a um, dissolution, some kind of dissolution of existence and values and. Um, is this the kind of a general perspective of, uh, that we um, realize now, experience? Do you have any purpose, a vision uh, to depict the stories like that? Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I lost you again part of the way and then I could not uh, hear your last part of it. Uh, can you hear now? No, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, can, can you I'm hear me now? I'm... Um, the... no, uh, and I I see that uh, this these two sets of characters have their own problems. For example, the swans, Lordy Swan and the Uncle Swan have they come to a very different kind of a conclusion about life. Uncle Swan deeps into the river. He says that the purpose of life should be to deep into the history. And this Lordy Swan, who is the lover of this great flyer, that lady, um, he um, also becomes very powerless and realizes. So everybody, including human beings, move towards a kind of very, very um, powerless kind of failure to our, of uh, both the birds as well as human beings. Is that the vision of the 21st century, our vision of life? Or um, is it a, a device to show that there is something wrong in the universe? You know, like at a certain way, the, my attempt was to like I've used that metaphor of flying and thinking down to the bottom of the uh, pond quite extensively, and I mean it that that uh, it's that metaphor has I think uh, multiple uh, meanings in the in the novel rather than just one, and one you know like flying is for the the, the Lahari house for example the flying is flying towards love, flying oh. towards freedom, and but at the for but for his Taka his uncle. You know, like he thinks that you know, sinking to the bottom, oh. or swimming down to the bottom of the pond is more important than flying it's, to the sky. And maybe at the bottom there is, and maybe there is some kind of trauma, you know, buried in, in the in the very texture of history. Because history, if we look at it, you know, there is there are a lot of you know killings and deaths, you know, like contests for power. Oh. So history, history is full of you know like tragedies. And if we seek truth at the uh, find bottom uh, truth at the bottom of the pond and there is this meta metaphor of wells yeah. within wells in the so there is one well inside the other there is another well inside the well another well inside the well so you are going down and down and maybe you discover some kind of truth there but maybe that truth might be very traumatic rather yeah. than beautiful you know that is also a possibility uh, as you know kaka has also discovered that traumatic truth that the that the story about the swans that when they disappear, they are taken to Baikunta or to some kind of a utopian space. That story is maybe maybe just it's merely a story. And the right. truth is that you know human beings just take them and they take their throats. Right. And uh, so that can be a traumatic truth also. So I was playing with you know with these various uh, questions of you know like flying and diving to the bottom and truth and what is like uh, what might be the performance of the truth with, with those questions. And there is there is one uh, other very, uh, the, this novel has become very very pop, uh, popular among the very serious Nepali literary writers and academics. They are organizing seminars and writing about this. Only yesterday, 
uh, they had organized a seminar in Eastern uh, University and they were discussing this and they, had, uh, they informed me about the, the uh, also. So this novel has uh, brought about a, a tremendous um, change, uh, a kind of a revolution in writing fiction in Nepali. What do you think that reason could be there? Could that be a shift in the interest shift in the taste of the Nepali readers towards nature as you would like to see that? Or is it, uh, is it because of the power of the novel, very poetic writing of your novel? Which one do you think personally as a Nepali literary writer? Why is this novel catching up with the, the enlightened audience today? Did you hear me? I don't know why this is giving a lot there's a lot of lot of interest is catching up. Part of what you were saying in the last year. Is it the interest in the ecological as the kind of a new perception that you have brought about? Which I think that is my perception is that people are very, very this novel has opened a new vision for people in literature where they have never encountered such vision before. That makes me a little hopeful that people, since they like this novel, probably they are going to have uh, to open up new avenues, new kind of uh, openings of, about novel and the, the story of the nature of birds and animals. Have. What is your own um, perspective about that? Uh, I think uh, like this, this consciousness that, uh, I mean, environmental criticism has been there for a while. People have been doing ecological criticism that has been there while the Nepal literature has has been has taken some time like catching up to that and i think but i think that's a positive sign that many people are writing about uh, nature and i mean uh, from a certain not only kind of a nature in a very romantic way nature have been, the writers have been writing about nature for and animals and birds for a, from romantic ages in what's worth i mean before that also but using talking about nature also to question human perspectives human our own human centeredness about which you know, like we are so proud, and uh, we we take a lot of things like nation states and you know, like ownership of property, institution of marriage, yes. the meaning of relationships, question of what is true and what is false. Lot of things we think that you know they fell from the sky and they are quite natural, but I think you know they are quite constructed. If we just uh, if we just take some time to stand back a little bit and look at us, try to look at us from the perspective of you know like plants and birds and suns, we might discover some, some new and alternative possibilities of being, is what I would say, sir. I think that was what I was trying to do. And I think other people are also doing it. And in time, I think this consciousness will, I hope, in Nepali literature and in elsewhere, I hope this consciousness I about think. environment, you know, yeah. human, human beings, that will continue to grow. I hope that, sir. And uh, one Professor, Professor Abhishevedi, uh, will you be able to uh, wind up in uh, one minute so that uh, the other one can be started? Oh, I see. There's a <laughs> <I> cut. <laughs> very little time. So, yeah. then the last question I just want to there is a kind of human story also, like a story of ambition, flight, and so on. They go to America, they get married and fail, and so on. So ultimately, they come and uh, the novel links them up to this very story because the Prem, the narrator, uh, is back there to tell the, all these stories. Um, Sanjeev, how do you uh, see finally the presence of the human characters and their own stories of failure? I think you know, in, in a certain way, I think this novel, the multiple stories, the stories of the swans and the story of the human beings, the story of Prem and Anus, I think all stories in a sense, they end in tragedy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Element of sad sadness in all these three story stories or other stories. And my challenge was to how to tell these sad stories, not in a tearful kind of way, but you know, with, with humor. And so I think I, but there is some uh, element of humor in. Yes, I, I think the element of humor is a story as you also identified in the case of Anchakar when many people have not yes, thought sir. about that. So that that use of humor. Like, yeah. Thank you very much for the time that you gave us, but we can go on. Um, we are discussing in Nepal about this novel. 
um, I have written articles and I'll send you, I've sent to Didi and then I hope you'll be able to read this um, story. I'm going to first of all again tomorrow. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Abhishek ji and uh, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Utpreet. Now uh, we are going to have the second conversation uh, by Ms. Uh, uh, Namgai Peldon uh, in conversation with uh, Dr. Uh, Rinjan Rinjan from Bhutan. Now may I request uh, 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 Ms. Namgai Peldon ji to kindly introduce herself first, then introduce the uh, Dr. Rinjan Rinjan ji to, to the viewers. Hello. Yeah, kindly start. Kindly start. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm Namika I work as a corporate credit officer in Bhutan Bank Limited. With me today, I have Dr. Rinzin Rinzin, and two of us will be leading this section for the next 15 minutes. To start with a uh, brief introduction about Dr. Rinzin Rinzin, Dr. Rinzin Rinzin is a Bhutanese poet. He is an author. He, 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 he also a Buddhist scholar. <clears throat> Dr. Nitin Rinzen worked as a member of parliament. He was lecturer, agriculture scientist, manager, management consultant, and also writer for the past two decades. Dr. Rinzen earned five academic degrees in multiple disciplines, including agriculture science, business administration, business management, with public administration and literature from Austria, Bhutan, India, and the Philippines. Currently, Dr. Rinzin serves as a chief venture coordinator for Bhutan for the foundation of SAC Writers and Literature Festival. He has been honored with numerous international awards in literature, peace, and humanity. Thank you so much, Namke. Uh, and namaste to everybody. Uh, thank you so, so much, Namge, for uh, a very long and colorful <laughs> introduction. <laughs> As I was saying yesterday, I find it very really difficult to introduce uh, myself. And, and we have just noticed Namge introduced herself very briefly. Now, Ms. Namge, Namge Pedro here uh, is not just a uh, manager, a credit officer in a bank. Uh, she's also a prolific uh, poetess. Uh, her collection of poems uh, was published a couple of, I think, yeah, two years, two years ago, titled "Reflections on a Perfect M Mother." Contains a, uh, contains soulful poems uh, about love between her and her mother. Unfortunately, she had lost her mo uh, mo mother, so you can understand why the poem poems are really, uh, you know, too very very soul soulful. Uh, she has a master's uh, degree in business administration from the Netherlands. Uh, she had specialized in international bu business, which is one of my favorite subjects, by, by, the, by the way. Uh, and as she said, she is a banker, but works as a, a credit officer in Bhutan's one of the most prominent banks, uh, Bhutan National Bank. Uh, back to you, Namge. Yes, thank you, love. Um, now, to begin with the question, Dr. Rinzen, 20 years ago, you were an agriculture researcher pursuing postgraduate studies in agriculture science at University of Melbourne in Austria when you wrote your first book, The Talisman of Good Fortune and Other Stories from Rule of the Tongue. What actually inspired you to write this book? Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for, the, for this lovely question, Namge. Uh, I fell in love with literature ever since I was a small kid. The first time I had access to comic books at the age of around seven, eight. Before that, I never saw a bookstore. So uh, by the time I was in fourth grade, I started uh, re reading pocket books like Nancy Dew, Secret Seven, uh, you know, all, all those pocket books. And then I fell in love uh, with not just books, but writers. I thought, no, writers are great people. You know, that they can get into your brain, make you believe things that you never believed in. <laughs> Sometimes they can take you take you on a ride. You know, make you imagine about things. So I so I thought one day, who knows? I might be a, I might 
become a writer myself. But then, uh, just because I, I was a bit good in studies, I always got it pulled into science. You know, I didn't, did not get the opportunity to decide what subject to take up. The government decided, you know, if you are one of the baddest students, you are put, 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 uh, pushed into science. So I ended up as an agriculture researcher after a bachelor's degree from the Philippines. Then later, later when I was uh, pursuing my uh, postgraduate studies in, in Melbourne, as you, you put it, for the past six months, I was the only Bhutanese living in Melbourne city. And I felt so homesick, you know, <clears throat> so homes homesick that I started uh, thinking about all the good things and the bad things that happens in Bhutan and the, uh, and the society, you know. And that was the time I realized that everything is not beautiful about our country, the way the outside world puts it, you know? <clears throat> the way we have always ported ourselves to the outside world. We have our own social problems. And I felt really sorry uh, for people who get ostracized uh, because of our social beliefs. For instance, we, we believe, uh, we have beliefs like, you know, people are believed to be uh, giving poisons, although they don't do it physically, they are cursed. Uh, that, that's what we believe. And we also believe that, that people, some people have evil spirits and they harm us. Some people cast evil uh, you know, spells on us and these people get ostracized. Therefore, I thought it's about time that you know, I brought out these uh, social issues, uh, uh, bring them into light, let people debate about it, let people discuss about it, let people understand about it so that people don't, don't get ostracized and then Bhutan will really become a happier place to live in, you know. This is how I start, uh, this is why I did my first book. Okay, thank you for your answer. Uh, your second question, you wrote Clock Tales for Children, author the novel too, and now you're an international acclaim poet. Why this shift to poetry love? Oh, that's an interesting story in this as well. Uh, I was, I continued writing for children and I, I was already working on a novel as well. I had to finish. And then I, I already have a few, few more children's books ready to go to print. But then uh, <clears throat> uh, it takes a few blows to, you know, blows on your head <laughs> or uh, on your heart uh, to change certain things in, in life. I lost my uh, father in 2013, and then I lost the election. <laughs> I was a member of parliament. I lost the election. And then, I, then after two years, I lost my uh, mother-in-law who was like a mother to me. I really needed uh, an avenue, you know, a medium to express, my, express myself. And then, the, then, I, then because I was getting older and older, I realized that the world is full of problems. We have climate, you know, climate change, uh, uh, across cities, North Korea, and I mean, <laughs> economic uh, crisis, environmental crisis. You know, there were so many messages that I needed to pa uh, pass on to, you know. Uh, and the, sh the best possible way was to do it through poetry because, it, because you, can, you can write, you know, hundreds of poems in a, in a few days. Just, just think about it. I understand. Issue and then put it on the paper, share it, and then and social media these days, you know, you can, you can reach out to anybody all over the world. Yes. How I got into poetry, and for the last five years, I, I was, got so, so much into poetry that I, I'm having difficulty getting out of it. Well, thank you, La. Thank you for your answer. And you have now the next question. You are a a uh, prolific poet writing with ease on different themes ranging from love to beauty, love, to nature, to spirituality and humanity. Nevertheless, you, as always, your key interest seems to be promotion of your own what love for a sense of humanity. For the benefit of the audience, can you explain briefly what core essence of humanity are? This world has a lot of problems, as you know. We are creating borders ev everywhere. Uh, these are all man-made borders, you know, to distance ourselves from, from each, each other. You know, the, the borders of caste, creed, faith, faith, religion, politics, economics, so on, and gender and all. And we are, by doing all this, I always feel that we are losing humanity. We are human beings and we ought to be hum, human. Therefore, I always try to, uh, you know, share my 
humble thoughts on huma humanity and how to make this world a better place to live in. And I believe that there are four core uh, essences of humanity that, that we really need to focus, focus on. One is love. Love yourself and love everybody. Love also sentient beings. Nothing can go wrong with love. Next one, second one is com compassion. I mean, the world lacks compassion today, you know. You know, as human beings, we need to be more comp compassionate, more, more cons considerate. You can, you can love yourself, love others, only if you have a compassionate heart. The, uh, and the next one, the need of the, the biggest need of the day, and I'm, I'm happy that social media is doing its part uh, these, these days, is promotion of friendship. Friendship. Forget about caste, creed, national, nationalities, co color, gen, gender, politics, uh, you know, and differences in eco economies. Let's forget all this. Let's celebrate friendship. Let's promote friendship. friendship. And last but not the, not the least, tolerance. A lot of us lack tolerance. We, we, we always want to, you know, patronize others on our own beliefs, on our own pets, pets, on our own political agendas, but we don't tolerate others, you know. We, uh, like I was saying, we keep on creating board, borders and we, are, we have become so intolerant of each other. This is why there's so many problems in, in this world. So let's, let's be tolerant of others so that we, we get tolerated accepted by others. These, are the, these, I believe, are the core, core essence of humanity that we need to promote life. Uh, Ms. Namga Peldan uh, will be able to uh, wind up in uh, two minutes. I'll be very grateful. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ms. Namga, if you don't mind, can yes, I wind sir. it up with a poem? Can I yes, sir. I was about to ask for Simla. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. I'll do it very fast. The title of the poem is Human Heart, the Final Resort. If love fills every heart, compassion comes, uh, becomes every man's art. Friendship is sought through tolerance supreme. I wonder if I need ever dream. Human conflicts and atrocities unbearable. Failed governances and economies terrible. Natural disasters and new diseases incurable. How can my heart remain? unshakable, submerged in devilish hatred, jealousy, and ignorance, how can we hope for deliverance? We are the architect of our own fate, yet we don't change our heart's state. Thus, I dream of a world humane, where every man is a true human. I pray night and day, full of hope, that for universal peace, all men will cope. So thank you so much, Tashi Dele. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you uh, thank you. Excellent. 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 Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank Namge. You so thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you Miss uh, Namge Peldan and uh, Dr. Rinjan Rinjanji for uh, your uh, beautiful presentations. And uh, 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 before I conclude, my sincere thanks goes to. Uh, Dr. Ajit Kaurji, uh, President of Postpol, and, we, and I, my, I sincerely thank on behalf of uh, Dr. K. Srinivas Rauji, Secretary Sahitya Academy, to all the participants who have taken part in this uh, uh, ninth session. And uh, with this, this uh, program.